Hello and welcome to my Z80 project. I know, sometimes I say Z80 and other times I say Z80. What can I say? As a Canadian with both British and US cultural influences, some of us are pretty mixed up. <laughs> well, on to the meaty stuff. I experimented a bit with some circuitry in the past few days, trying to record everything. Well, first off, let me tell you that recording everything makes for long editing. I'll try not to do that in the future and segment things into smaller chunks. Firstly, I've been meaning to implement a soft power on circuit. I researched the subject a bit and finally came across Great Scott's design. If you want to know the exact way it functions, then I invite you to view his video on it. The link will be in the description. By the way, you should check out his channel. He touches on a lot of electronic subjects and he really knows his stuff. Basically, I'm implementing a latching circuit with little or no power draw when powered off. The circuit is built around a P-channel MOSFET, basically a semiconductor switch, two BJT transistors, three resistors, and a capacitor, and of course, a push-button switch. An important thing to know about a P-channel MOSFET, it is off when the gate voltage is high and on when the gate voltage is low. The general gist of it, when power is connected, voltage is applied to the gate of the MOSFET, meaning the MOSFET is turned off. When the button is pressed for the first time, the left transistor is activated and puts the gate to ground, thereby activating the MOSFET and turning on the load voltage. When the button is pressed a second time, the capacitor discharges, turning off the transistors and the gate of the MOSFET is set to high, turning the load voltage off. In retrospect, I find the circuit somewhat glitchy. It latches on rather well, but it turns out that if you press the button too quickly to turn off the power, it rapidly turns off and on the circuit. I played around with various resistors and capacitor values, to no avail. If you have any suggestions on how to improve this circuit, please leave a comment down below. It would be greatly appreciated. But for now, I will set aside this project and revisit it some other time. Secondly, I updated the reset circuit to a 74 AHC 174 hex D flip flop instead of the 74 HC 175 quad D flip flop, giving me six clock cycles at reset state instead of four. It just makes me feel better to have these extra cycles knowing the Z80 requires a minimum of three cycles in a reset state. The only disadvantage is I'll require an inverter gate to display the reset state of the LED, something I did not need with the 175 because of the inverted Q outputs. But I want this LED. It could come in handy. Thirdly, I updated the clock output module from a 74HC151 to a 74HC251 8 to 1 multiplexer with a 3 state output and Schmidt trigger inputs. This will give me the option to override the clock with another bus master by pulling high the output enable pin. As a benefit, the clock signals will be cleaned up a bit with the Schmidt trigger inputs. And fourthly, I added the option to control the speed of the clock by software. The system starts at a preset slow speed of either 1.8 MHz or 3.6 depending on the switch position and can be increased to 7.4 MHz of course by software. I figured that this could be an interesting feature when copying the ROM to RAM at boot time, if the ROM was too slow that is. I wasn't sure if this could be usable if constantly switching speeds during normal operations, like accessing slower peripherals. But I came across a circuit on the 6502.org website by Paul Fellingham. I invite you to check out that page for the precise explanation by following the link down below. 
I have, of course, made a few changes to the circuit to suit my needs. First off, I have three clock sources to choose from, so I needed to have two flip-flops. I guess I could have a fourth clock option, but what could be possibly a good clock speed other than 1.8, 3.6, and 7.4 MHz? Should I divide it even further down to 900 or 450 kHz? Let me know in the comments what you suggest. FYI, my slow clock speed goes up to 2 kHz. Maybe I could have something in between. So what's going on? In essence, when the CPU writes a particular value to an address, this value is latched to a pair of D flip flops which in turn selects which clock source to output on the 74HC251. Here's the thing, as the select line is pulled low while latching the values, the clock will stop at the next low cycle and go back high two clock cycles after the select line goes high. This ensures a glitch-free switch of the clock. Now since I'm lighting things up like a Christmas tree, might as well have LEDs that show the three possible states of the fast clock. I chose the 74AHC138 3-8 decoder to do this task. The latch data is displayed only if the speed select is set to fast and the mode select is set at free run. There is no sense in displaying the fast clock speed if the speed is set to slow and the mode select is set to single step. In case you wondered what those diodes are for, it avoids one of the outputs of the 138 to go back onto the other output, which is not really good. So there you have it, my meanderings in the world of basic clocks. Mind you, it may not be the perfect clock, but I think it will do nicely for my experimentation period. If you have any ideas on how to improve my design, do feel free to comment. And that's it for episode 3. Please help this channel grow by subscribing hitting the notification bell, and of course, clicking the like button. See you next time.